And here we go. So like Adam said, this is the introduction to soft plastic bait making. My name is Jeremy Hancock. You can find me on Instagram at Back Bay Baits. I live here in Austin, Texas. Um, I have been fishing for a very long time. I think my first memory of catching um, sunfish at five or six years old um, at family reunions. The, more, the majority of the fishing that I do now is saltwater based and I have a boat down in Rockport, Texas. Um, I am not a professional at this by any means. It's a hobby that I picked up that I was interested in and I'm happy to share with you. You may have questions that I don't know the answers to. Um, I've been doing it for about six months now. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. When I start sharing everything that I have, you'll, you'll quickly see of how addicting that this possibly this can possibly become. Um, tonight, what I'm going to do is we're going to work on hand pouring, um, which is just one aspect of bait making. Um, injection is another more advanced, so to speak. Um, but what we're going to be doing is just hand pouring baits. So the necessary items to get started is a, is a well ventilated workspace. Um, plastisol, which is the actual plastic itself, which you're going to pour. Color pigments, pearls and glitters, and then the molds to pour um, the stuff into the stuff, plastisol into. So workplace setup. You need to have a microwave. The wattage doesn't matter. Um, you, if you get into the hobby, having a microwave to cook the plastisol, some cook it faster, some cook it slower. Wattage doesn't matter. It's just whenever you do cook, and I'll, I'll cover this um, in a later slide, it just needs to get to 350 degrees. You need gloves. Um, these are just fishing gloves that I use. They're plastic coated on one side. Essentially, you just need these. When you're stirring, you don't want 350 degree plastic getting on your skin to cause burns. Um, and also handling the hot, the hot measuring cups to put into the vacuum chain or chamber or as you're pouring. Um, it's just safe to, to, to save your, your hands from the, from the temperature. Eye protection is always good. You need glass measuring cups. So I use these two cup measuring cups most of the time. Um, I pour a half cup of plastisol and cook it at a half cup at a time. And that gets me, I don't know, five or six baits, depending on how I'm pouring them. If I'm doing a two pour or a two color pour, like, I, like we will do tonight, um, it kind of just extends it out so I can get maybe eight baits um, out of a half a cup. Um, you need knives for stirring. I just use butter knives. Um, you could use popsicle sticks. You could use chopsticks. You could use whatever you have. Um, I just found that butter knives are a cheap alternative. Um, you can get a pack of four or I think five of them um, from Walmart for like a dollar. So that's, uh, that's the route that I went. And lastly, you need a thermometer. You need either an infrared thermometer or a probe um, to measure the temperature of the plastic. So that brings us to Plastisol. What is it and how do we use it? Plastisol is a flexible PVC. It's a polyvinyl chloride resin mixture. Um, it's a resin mixture with, with plasticizer. I buy it in one gallon containers. Um, I'll go over the, the options here in a minute, but this is what it looks like and this is how you can buy it. Um, liquid plasticizer that flows as a liquid can be poured into the molds. Uh, before each use, it needs to be slightly mixed and not agitated. Agitation will cause bubbles, um, which is what you don't want in your baits. Um, over time, the resin will separate from the bottom or separate to the bottom. And this is what's called hard pack. I'm hoping that you can see this. Um, you can see here there's a layer of a plastisol and then resin on the bottom. 
Um, this this version at the bottom is what you, we call hard pack. This brand that I use called uh, Dead On Plastic, it mixes really well. So essentially all that you would need to do is turn this upside down and give it some time and then it will mix itself. Again, like I said, cook to 350 degrees. This will dissolve the plastic particles and give them an even mixture. And it will turn into a gel with a high viscosity. Once you get it cooked above 350 degrees, it becomes pourable or injectable. And at that time is when you add your, your color pigment, uh, pearls if you're going that route, glitters, and then you start the pouring process. One thing of importance is to always keep them sealed. Um, keep them sealed to keep the moisture out. Moisture in the plastic is gonna cause you problems in the long run. So like I said, I use dead on plastics. This is the plastic of choice that I go with. Um, it comes in one to five gallon bucket, one gallon buckets or five gallon buckets. It has low bubbles. Um, there's non phthalate, which is a chemical that is harmful to humans. Um, there's low odor with this. There's no need to add heat stabilizer. And it's almost impossible to scorch or cause yellowing on reheats. When I first got started, um, I didn't want to waste plastic. So I would just pour, um, I got, I poured a half a cup into a measuring cup and then I heated it and then I would pour it because getting the pouring process down takes time. And so instead of wasting plastic, I would continually use the same plastic. And I used that plastic for weeks on end, just practicing the pouring, getting the flow down. And with all of those reheats, I never had a yellowing and I never scorched the plastic. Dead on plastic comes in two types. It comes as in a white bucket or a black bucket, white floats and black sinks. You can mix the two and the combinations are endless. The, the hardness levels of the baits are soft for finesse. So think robo style worms. There's a worm blend, which is a medium soft. It's for smaller Senkos, shaky neds, um, those sorts of baits. Then there's the swim and the jerk bait, which is a medium blend hardness. Um, those are typically for swim baits that are less than four inches. Craw two blend, which is a hard to medium hardness of the bait. It's more for, for more punching, flipping, and swim baits over four inches. And then there's the saltwater blend, which is the hardest. And it's made for more toothy critters. Because I fish at the coast, um, the plastic that we will be using tonight will be the saltwater blend. Color pigments, pearls, and glitters. So um, colors are a personal preference. Uh, if you're going to get started, you need to just pick colors and kind of go from there. I have many colors. Um, I buy dead on plastic stuff because it's easier with shipping. So I have 15, 16 colors as of right now. Um, these are just basic colors, red. And then I have, they also offer this uh, Paragon blend, which is also has a pearl feature mixed directly into the pigment itself. So I had mentioned pearls. Pearls are typically powder. So this silver pearl will give um, will turn the plastic silver and also at the same time add a pearl effect. And let me show you. So if you can see this bait, the bottom half is this is the is this pearl powder. And you can see that it has um, just a glitter to it as as well as um, a different color pattern. This is a this bottom color here is the chartreuse pearl that I used with a, a large glitter, uh, black glitter to come up with this pattern. Basically, um, the combinations are endless. Glitter themselves range from um, 0 0.008 inches to 0 0.062 inches. Uh, the common sizes are 0.15 for small, 0 0.035 for medium, and 0.62 for large. Um, glitter comes in multiple cuts, 
hex, square, and string, and a plethora of colors. Um, so if you com if you combine everything with the dyes, the pigments, uh, the yeah, the pigments, the pearls, and then glitter, so many combinations to come up with. Um, mold types. So there are two different kinds of molds. These are the hand pour molds, and this is what we're going to be using this evening. This is made of silicone, and this is a cheaper mold. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. inexpensive. Um, price point for these are anywhere from $10 to less than $50. Um, I'm sure that you can find more expensive, bigger molds that run a little bit more money. Like I have this bigger mold, which is actually this bait. Um, this is pricier than, than these little guys. But as you kind of grow your collection, you want to have different options. Tonight, we're going to be using these aluminum molds. This is a, an epic bait mold. It's called the Nuggets. I'll show you um, the detail here. It actually has a hook slot. That's what this is. And so this is what we're going to be making this evening. Hey, Jeremy, it's Adam. Yes. Hey, do do you have uh, time for two questions? Sure. Yeah, so on the chat, uh, we had one, uh, the cost of one gallon. Yes. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I have a cheat sheet that I'm going to share with you guys that it has links for plastic from a variety of companies and um, different places that you can go get molds, you can go get glitters, you can go get pigments, you can go get pearls, all those sorts of things. So I can share that with you. Um, it's been so long since I bought it. It does. It, I just don't remember. Actually, hold on. Yeah, I don't have it. My apologies, but you can look it up yourself. What was the other question? Where did you get a decent selection of molds? So yeah, again, that will be on the cheat sheet that I have for you guys. Um, the silicone molds are from a company called Stank Baits. Every silicone mold I have, I, I've purchased from them. And I'm a big fan of Epic Bait Molds which is what I just showed you here. Um, I actually have two different kinds of molds, uh, hand pour molds. So this is the Epic Pug. It's a little bit bigger. It is this bait. So it's got a, a nice waddle on the tail. And then this is the Nugget. So to give you the same co color combination, this is the Nugget. This is what we're going to be making this evening. This is the Pud. So these are two different molds here. And then I also have this injection mold to make eyes. Um, so these guys come out like this. I have an injector back behind here I can show you. You draw it up like you would into a needle. You shoot it into the first side. You pull that out, you lay it in the second. And then you shoot the second side and it comes out like this. These eyes come for the nugget. So you'll see whenever we start to make the baits, we'll be putting these eyes actually into the mold itself. Any other questions? Adam? Hey, <laughs> sorry. Uh, can I reuse my torn up plastic baits? You can. So you can re you can remelt baits. Um, if you're going to do that, I would recommend using some worm oil. So you can chop them up into smaller smaller pieces, add a little bit of worm oil, um, and then heat it up in the microwave. Again, you don't want to get over 355 or 350 degrees. Um, so kind of just go through the process slow. But yes, you can definitely remail plastics. And uh, those are 
uh, we're caught up on questions. Um, we did get um, somebody provided a cost uh, of a gallon blend at twenty five ninety nine. Okay, that sounds about right. And it lasts it lasts a long time. Like I have made plenty of baits and I've given baits away and have sold baits. Um, and I still am on my first gallon. So it lasts a long, it goes a long way. Um, custom molds, custom molds are also an option. Um, you have to find somebody that's willing to work with you through your design. Um, there's probably will be some revisions in the process and those are, those are pretty costly, probably upwards of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars um, from start to finish for that guy and then there are a variety so anything that you want that you can find flukes uh, grubs worms creature baits swim baits it's out there some nice to haves um it's nice to have multiple microwaves um i have two I have two batches already cooked up for for this class. I'll just need to pop them in the microwave. Um, but when if you have two microwaves and it kind of makes things kind of go faster, a hot plate is nice. Um, when you're using aluminum molds and you're you're pouring multiple layers, um, it's good to keep the mold itself warm so you don't get cold cracking. Um, typically, what I do is I will run the the molds on the hot plate at around 330 degrees and then i will pour the colors like the, the first layer and then the second layer and then i'll crank it up to like 350 so everything liquefies and then cool it back down um, that way it eliminates any kind of cold cracking um, which can be a problem and almost separates you can use a heat gun. A heat gun's good. So if you are using only silicone molds um, and you want to pour multiple layers, it's good to heat them up with a heat gun. Um, so it kind of gets liquefies that the top layer of that bait. So when you're pouring in the, the molten plastisol, it gives it something to stick to. And ultimately, a vacuum chamber. So because I use dead on plastics when I first got started, I didn't have a vacuum chamber and I noticed that there were some bubbles, but those bubbles were my fault because I was aggressively shaking the gallon jugs. Um, I have since changed my ways and I've learned the lessons, but once those bubbles are in there, they are in there. So I went ahead and I purchased the vacuum chamber just to um, eliminate the bubbles altogether. So my typical how I, how I pour the baits is I'll pour out a half a cup, pop it in a microwave and get it up to 350. So that will cook it. Then I'll drop it into the vacuum chamber. I'll run all the bubbles out. And then that gets me to a starting point. And that's where we're at right now. So before, before everybody joined, I have two half cups sitting on the hot plate so that it keeps them relatively warm and I don't have to heat them from scratch again. Um, to, where was I going with that? Oh, um, they're sitting on the hot plate. At, I have the hot plate set around 320 degrees. Um, I think this is my last slide. It is. So what we can do is, um, we can start the bait making process and, uh, kind of go from there. But like I was saying, I heat up half cups of plastic, throw it in the vacuum chamber, burn off any bubbles that are remaining on top, and that's the point that we're at right now. So does anybody else have any other questions, Adam? Hey, yeah, and thanks for <laughs> giving me a second. Um, yeah, we have a couple questions. Does Go the plastic it. cool hot or cold? Um, not sure what that means. Does the plastic does the plastic pour hot or pour cold? Is that the question? 
Um, let's see. If we could, uh, Kaysen, if we could, yeah, uh, maybe uh, provide a different, uh, different wording on that. Okay. Does the solidify cool or hot? Does it? So it solidifies when it's cool. So these these baits, um, once they cool down, uh, it'll solidify around let's say 250 degrees, which I don't think is is necessarily right. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that um, we have a half an hour. So I'm most likely going to be unmolding these when they're relatively hot. Um, but I want to at least show you what the end product looks like. So um, you can do it. Um, it's, it's best to wait until they're room temperature, but you can do it when they're hot. As long as the plastic is, is solidified, you're good to go. I hope that answers the question. And then... Uh, were you going to show what a vacuum chamber looks like? I can, yes. Okay. And we're all caught up. Okay, we're all caught up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to re-add this camera. Or this, yeah, this phone. Okay. And I'm going to drop, um, I'm going to drop my Chromebook. So okay. I want to talk here. Can you hear me? Yeah, there's there's some feedback. Okay, I stopped it. Okay, good. That sounds good. And then I'm adding this phone. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna start this video. And then give me a second here to move some things around. Okay, one second. So hopefully you can hear me. This is the vacuum chamber. It's essentially just a pump. And then this is the chamber itself. You just need to make sure that it's closed. I want you to put the plastic in there. Make sure your valve is closed and then you turn them on. And then you just make sure that it's sealed. And then as you can see, it is sucking out all of the air. We, we can't see what you're showing. We're just looking at the back of your chair. Damn. You don't see this camera at all, huh? Oh, I think there's, so, so there should be two cameras, two different views. Yeah, there's, so we have, one view, um, and I see chemicals uh, and some propane. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So did, did everybody hear that explanation of the vacuum chamber? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and uh, rehash that. Okay. So the vacuum chamber is, is two things: it's the pump, and that's the the, the pod or the chamber itself. So essentially what you want to do is you want to take the hot plastic out of the microwave, put it into the chamber, turn the pump on, and then seal the container. 
And then as you can see, what this is doing is how it's sucking out the air. And that's essentially all that, all that the vacuum chamber does. Are we good with questions? We, we have one question in, can you make your own molds from silicone? You can, if you're that creative and wanna go that route, go for it. Okay, so colors, what is fake? So as I said, um, dead on, has these colors here and these have the pearl effect. So I have white, green. This is called marsh grass, which is a green color. This is Emerald City, Emerald City, which is another green, purple and gold. These are the, the pearls that I have, which is silver, chartreuse green and copper. Then for regular colors, I have grit, which is a bone color, blue, peach, red, white, brown, two different pinks, a red rum. So this is a color shift. It goes from red to purple, yellow, green, chartreuse, lime, chartreuse, green pumpkin, and dark melon. All I'm seeing is a tabletop. Yes, there are two different cameras. I also have June bug, zombie blood, red bug, and of course I have black. So where's this other camera? There it you go. Be, it should I be another that. user. Other user? You have to go from the uh, speaker view to the gallery view and then you'll be able to see it. You have to double click on the other view. All I have is uh, precipitants and chat and share. And that's it, mute and video. So um, I did spotlight the Jeremy, your phone. So that should come up. Um, so if, if you're having issues, the, the view setting is usually on the top right. If you scroll up to the top right, um, you should see a, it says view with a box and a couple of dots. If you click on that and hit speaker view, then you should see Jeremy's um, other phone. Do I, have, do I have to exit full screen to get to that? that not, nothing's coming up up there. Uh, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and try because I can't see on your angle, but go ahead and try a couple things. And you could also check on the left. Sometimes different the iPad or computer, it could be uh, on the left side. Okay, I see him setting the table. So you should be seeing this, right? So this is the plastisol? Right. Okay. Does anybody okay. have um, a color preference for the bottom layer of these baits? Y'all want to drop it in the chat? Green. Okay, let's do. So I see a couple of char chartreuse. I see orange. So we can go with chartreuse or char lime. And I thought somebody said orange. Did, was there something else that I missed? Oh, I saw green. Uh, how can I satisfy this? 
And then I just saw a pearl, right? Uh, we got a pearl, chartreuse, orange, white, or clear, and green. So I'm going to I'm going to use this marsh grass. It's going to be actually no. I'm going to use this green. This opaline green is also a pearl, so that will allow me that pearl and the green color. Um, and then we can use the neon. Each orange um, for the top. Or do you want the green on top and the orange on the bottom? Either or. Okay. We got either or, match your bait. Minus shad. So I'm going to take these eyes and put them in the mold. Actually, no, I'm not going to use these eyes. Because I have chartreuse eyes that I can use and satisfy that request. Can you add something to your bait that makes noise or rattle? Um, I am not aware of anything. I mean, I know that you can add things. Um, to like your line or to the hook slots or not to the hooks, but as a part of the hook itself. Um, I know that they sell things. But to actually add it to the bait, uh, that would be something that you would have to play with and figure out. I'm not saying that it can't be done. It's just there's not a there's not an easy way to do it as a that I know of. Okay, so goes back in. Plastic is going to be cooled down now. I'm going to pop this back in the microwave. With that, with the chartreuse eyes, I'm going to do green on the bottom and the peach on top. Unless somebody objects. Okay, I'm using my phone so everybody can see this, right?
Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Because I've been doing this, I know that 25 drops in a half a comp is basically where I want it to be. So I add the pigment and I start to stir. And you can see the outcome here, right? Hopefully that's coming across. Probably not as well as, as we would like it. When you're adding colors, there's a couple things that you want to think about. The opaqueness level is one thing. And by that, I mean how thick the colorant is. So if we pour this out on the table, it's still pretty translucent but it's there. And a little goes a long way. Jeremy, can you fill the question? I didn't see the question. Yeah, yes, well, th there was one buried a little bit. It's uh, there was a question when you heat plastic in microwave, how yes. long? What power on what wattage? That all, there's no, there's no formula for that. It's based, it depends on your microwave. I don't even know what this microwave wattage is that I currently have. It was something that I found on Craigslist for 10 bucks. Um, it cooks my plastic just fine. Um, the, the timing, it's better to go less timing and check it more often. To, until you get a feel for how your microwave cooks. Like I, I know cold plastic, I can put it in the microwave for three minutes and not worry about it getting to um, like 275, 280. And then that's when I start to stir. And then I, I heat it in like 30 second, 15 second increments to, to get to around the 350 degree mark. Does that make sense? I'm not following, I'm not watching Adam. So if there's another question, please. Okay, yeah, you're, uh, that appears to be it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to throw this in the microwave one last time. And then we will pour this plastic.
And Adam, can you pull up the, um, that was something we didn't talk about, the how we're going to give these away. Um, you want me to mention that? Yes. Yeah, or well, I can, I can mention it. Yeah, um, we are going to uh, give a, a pair of, it's to one person. We just need to be able to randomize it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, um, based on um, our our list of attendants, we'll we'll um, uh, pick at random um, one person, um, and then we'll send you these um, these plastic baits that Jeremy's making tonight. So I'm just heating this plastic back up right now. Get it to a temperature that we can pour. And here we go. So I'm gonna do this the best that I can with the camera in the way. So essentially what you wanna do You can see, you see that hook slot in the middle there? Typically what I do when I hand pour the first layer is I, I pour just enough to cover that hook slot. And that's gonna be the belly of the bait. So just enough to cover that hook slot. Just enough to cover that hook slot. And then that's the first layer. I'm going to throw this into the microwave and get that cooking. And then what I'd like to do, um, so right now there are going to be bubbles in here on the, on the top. I don't know if you can see them in the camera or not. Um, but what I like to do at this point is I like to hit it with some heat to evaporate those bubbles. Um, the heat gun, I'm not going to use at this time. I'm going to actually use just a blowtorch. They, they both do the same thing. <laughs> if it works. We're gonna go peach or orange for the top layer. With all those high, I didn't get to see that question, Adam. We have, so we have a couple questions. Um, do you have a quick list of pros and cons on mold types? I'm a big fan of 
aluminum. Um, I just I just like to pour in them better, uh, mostly because they come apart. So this is just the basic class. Um, I can cover while this plastic is heating a more advanced way of, of doing these. And it's called skin pours. So essentially what you do is you just take clear plastic and you pour a layer on both sides of the bait. And then you can decorate almost like a painting. You can decorate that, that layer of plastic. So if you match them on both sides and then put them to, and then when you put them together, and then just pour whatever color that you want to go with it. Um, you get you get more of a design and um, resembling like fish, and that's more it's more advanced and much more than I wanted to get into in this class. Um, I've offered, and if everybody is interested, I can do a more advanced class. But that's why I like. Um, aluminum molds. Now they are a con of aluminum molds are they are pricey. Um, these each are a hundred bucks a piece. Um, the the silicone molds are are relatively inexpensive and they they perform a, a good product. Um, you can't do as much with them, but getting started into the hobby, I recommend silicone. Uh, we also have a question. Can you mix colors to make different colors? Yes. So the primary color scale would come into play. Yellow and blue will make green, that sort of thing. And then a, um, so uh, some clarification. So it's setting up on the heat plate? Or is... So this this is currently on the on the hot plate. Keeping that at a temperature of 330 degrees is what the hot plate is. And so that's it. also keeping the mold and then that first layer of plastic that we, that we poured hot. Um, if we didn't, what would happen is, is that I would have to hit it with the heat gun to get it um, more to a liquid state and before I poured the second layer. And I, I'm curious too, ha have you ever tripped a breaker doing this? I have not. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, everything is relatively low. Um, the, the microwave's not always running. The heat plate or the hot plate is always kind of on, but that as of right now, that's the only thing that's running. Okay, it looks like we're caught up. Uh, just give you a time check. It's um, 6.54. Okay. That is not orange at all. So to test it, what you want to do is just kind of pour it out onto the, the table, and that's what your color is going to look like. And then you can add more to make it become less translucent. It's back over here so you can see this. And we'll pour this on top.
This is a little lower temperature than I would like to pour it. But because we're kind of running out of time here, I want to be able to show you guys what the end product is going to look like. And um, Jeremy, if um, it it looks like we may go over a little bit uh, for anybody that that uh, which is totally fine um, for everybody out there. You know, you're welcome. If you need to hop off, of course, hop off. If anybody wants to stay on, they can. We will send a follow up email uh, with links and um, and um, uh, the information and then uh, to the video that's recorded. So. Um, Let's see. We had a question come in. What's your time frame for cooling? So there's a trick to cooling. Give me a second here as I get this out. Um, if you have aluminum, uh, other other molds, for example. That will draw the heat out of, of the mold a lot faster. Um, it can take 10 to 15 minutes for them to just kind of cool. I have this. This is a piece of aluminum that was a um, you know, sell on TV, made for TV thing. Um, this defrosts meat, frozen frozen meat, frozen whatever, relatively quickly. Um, and it's also pretty ingenious. Uh, I use it to cool my baits. So I brought it out of the kitchen and I brought it out here to the garage. So this will suck the heat out of, out of these relatively quickly and then it will distribute into here. And then once, once this heats up, this will get to the point where I can't even put my hand on it. And um, once it gets to that point, then I take it off of here and then just kind of let it cool um, just on the table itself. Any other questions? Let's see. Uh, we got a question. Will the oh. top be flat or rounded? The top should be flat. So if you can see here, it's almost completely straight across. And then this is what they should look like this way. So this is the pipe, um, and that's what a good pour and a pipe looks like. There was a question that just popped up. I wasn't paying attention. Is the heat gun necessary for finishing the top of the bait? Um, it just eliminates errors. So the bait is a little has a has a little bit of bubbles in it. The heat will eliminate those bubbles. The heat also will distribute the plastic. Um, it'll heat it up and kind of you'll be able to move it around. Um, this was rather slightly cool when I was pouring it, but because we're kind of on a time crunch, um, I, I didn't want to throw it back into the microwave. Um, and I could fix that with the heat gun. Okay, it looks like we're all caught up. I do have, so since we have some time and there are still people here on the call, correct? Yeah, we have, we have about 25. Okay, so this is an injector. Um, essentially it's the same process and I mentioned it 
for um, the eye molds, right? So cooking the plastic is the same, um, and, but instead of pouring it, you suck it up into the injector, and then you would put it into the into the mold and then just kind of push down. And that's that's the process of the of the injector. I have um, I have injector molds um, that I just got. Um, I have a three inch swim bait. I have one point seven five inch swim bait, and I have shrimp um, that I'm going to be offering for people um, if they would like them. So those are those are my three newest molds. Was there something else that popped up there that I saw? Hey, can I help you? I can't hear you, madam. Um, yeah, well, I sorry to hear that, but not at this time. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Did the finish board miss that? Is the finish board, Adam, are you there? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that conversation. I just heard I just heard you talking. I didn't hear what you were saying. Okay, somebody was at my door. I thought I muted myself. What's up? Uh, there's questions there. Yes, I, um, the, the injection molds will be full body molds, correct? Um, yes. Okay. Um, is the finish lure different when using the injection mold? Um, it doesn't have, the, yes, it's different because it doesn't have the open top. Um, it has a, you pour it, um, when you inject it, um, the ones that I have, there are two different there are two different kinds. There's single pool or there's single injections where you do the same process as you do here. You do one at a time. There are others that you inject and then it goes down into what they call a sprue. And then in the mold itself, the, the, the plastic will go down in and then it will split out. Um, I have eight, for example, in my, um, my shrimp mold has eight. And I think my 1.75 is 10. So 10 molds with one push. Um, I, what I didn't mention is that this is a single injector, right? So this would allow you to, to do one color. I have a dual injector coming, which is two of these. And then it has a blending block on the, on the end of it. Um, so you can pour two different baits, just like we did tonight with a hand pour. Um, but they, come, they would come out more like the the stuff that you buy in the store. And these are called laminates. When there are two, two different colors in the injection process, that's called a laminate bait. So I will be making laminate baits here in the next, maybe even by the end of the week. Okay, so see here at the top, when I was using the heat gun, um, the plastic came outside of the mold itself. That's no big deal. That's just called flashing. You can fix that with a razor blade once you, un once you unmold the bait itself. And then this is the favorite part of the entire process.
the unmolding of the bait. So as you can see, that's what we come up with. And then I'll clean these up and I'll actually send whoever wins, I'll send them five of them. I'll use the remaining plastic, um, just as if you had placed an order and I'll send you five of them. That's great. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. And I'll, we'll, um, I'll get together with you and send you the final list. And then we, okay. you know, we can just do a random draw. Uh, we did have another question come in. Do you have to worry about air bubbles in the injection molds? Um, only the same way that you do um, in the process of hand pouring. If you follow the process, you know, if you don't over agitate the plastisol, if you use a vacuum chamber, um, sometimes I'll even put it back into the, the vacuum chamber once I have the dyes, the pigments added, um, just to remove any further bubbles. But once you go through that process and it's pretty plastic or pretty bubble free, uh, unless you're being very aggressive with the plastic um, in the measuring cup, you're not gonna get any bubbles. It can happen from stirring. There can be moisture in the dyes. That's gonna add bubbles. Like there are lots of ways that bubbles can be introduced, but if you're pretty diligent about getting the bubbles out when you're working with them, um, there, there's not gonna be a lot of bubbles. These are not perfect by any means. Um, the, the top layer could have used another cook time, like I said, but they're handmade, they're, they're homemade. Um, you can't really expect, you can't expect perfection all the time. And that's just something that you kind of deal with. Are we good? We have, a, we have another question, uh, and we'll go ahead and make this um, the last question. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, um, you can reach out to me and I'll forward it to Jeremy. Uh, also, we'll, we'll be in touch with a follow-up email with links and uh, other resources. Um, are air bubbles cosmetic or integrity um, of material issues? It is a it is a material issue. Um, I use dead on plastic. I use dead on plastic because um, it, it's probably the best plastic there is on the market. Um, it is low bubbles. Um, it comes that way, like I like I yeah. had mentioned in the beginning. I introduced a lot of bubbles because I was overly aggressive in in shaking the container. So I was causing myself headaches. Um, I went and bought the vacuum chamber, kind of got rid of most of them. Once I get finished with this gallon, the next gallons that, you know, that I order or move forward in my, um, in the hobby itself, I will, I know how to handle it. Um, so it's just a, a turning process, almost think, think rotisserie chicken. Um, when you're when you're turning the gallons, uh, when you have a five gallon bucket, just use a spoon to to slowly turn it. Um, it should look like a milk consistency. Uh, there will the, the resin will will sink to the bottom, and you'll be looking at like a, a clear ish liquid on top, and that does that's not right. That's not the way that it should be. It should look like milk. Um, so gently stir it with a spoon. Um, and it will reincorporate, and then you, you should be good to go. Dead on, the reason why I went with dead on plastics is because it is low bubbles to begin with. Um, the, the vacuum chamber is like 250 bucks. It's not cheap, um, but when you're buying everything, it's something that you can, you can hold off on getting. And, and that's, it just got to the point where I was having too much bubbles because I introduced too many bubbles. One, one final thought that I wanted to add, when you do pour baits, you have to let them cure for, for 24 to 48 hours before you use them. 
Um, and so that just allows the, the resin and the plastic to, to set. Um, if you had to, you could take this out. You could put a hook in this and you could, um, you could go fish this now. Um, durability wise, I don't know what you would get, but if you're in an absolute hurry, it can be done. But letting them sit for a period of time, 40, 24 to 48 hours is the best. Um, I will also add that I will add a, uh, a scent to the baits as well. So um, expect that if you are the winner. Well, okay. Else? No, that's it. Um, Perfect. Thank you again, Jeremy. Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, if you do get picked, we will get in touch with you uh, to get your address and uh, keep looking out on our Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, calendar on our website. We'll have more online classes and fishing opportunities. So y'all have a good yeah. night. Uh, Jeremy, Thank you, guys. Yeah, you bet. You want to hold on a second? You need me? Yeah, just, uh, oh, I got to stop the recording.